Hello and welcome back to the channel folks. Today's gonna be something a little bit different. This one came in, um, well you'll see the players at the end, but this one did not come from the normal source that we've been seeing from Hotel Soap and Soul. This came in from another player who thought it might be interesting to try a lower funds level. Um, there's also smaller unit sizes here to see, you know, how, how does it impact the gameplay or the meta. They've also picked a map that has a lot of terrain, which can do a lot of masking. Um, so they're doing some scouting right now. It's gonna be Pergamon versus Rome, an interesting matchup. The uh, Pergamines are doing a little bit of scouting with a light horse. The Roman army is not coming into view. They actually have quite a few numbers despite the lower funds. And it's because they've used Vigiles and Hastati, which come in pretty cheap. There's Legatus, and then we've got a Skirmisher going uh, covered up there. In the very back, we've got a Citizen Cavalry hidden. And then for the main Pergamine force here, there is a Noble Cavalry, which could potentially be pretty powerful in these uh, low funds engagements if it can survive long enough. And then there's Militia Hoplites mixed with three Galatian swords. So a pretty low tier um, uh, skirm or infantry line, but Pergamine are always low tier in terms of infantry line. There's gonna be a couple of units of slingers up front for the Pergamines, and they are protected by their floppy brimmed hat. Well, protected from the sun, probably not from projectiles, but it looks cool. And uh, they'll be avoiding skin cancer should they actually live through the battle. Uh, so here we go. We're gonna get lined up. Um, the three has oh those are Saki Hastati so those are kind of a heavier more defensive unit uh, they're gonna come with pretty solid armor for I, I'm gonna call them a light infantry they're technically a medium infantry but price wise they're kind of a light infantry um, so yeah that's that's a decent bit of armor for them but again a, a more defensive unit they're kind of like a the younger brother of the Samnite warriors um, probably in more ways than one. There's four of them there, and then I see a couple more sword units. So the Romans definitely have a lot of infantry, and uh, they can see the Pergamines here, and they are choosing to flank around this hill. Um, and there's really no reason why they shouldn't. Uh, they could get singled out by some cavalry, but they have a lot of support nearby, so they should be good. Um, we got levies supporting the Romans here, and then these are some standard Hastati moving in. I like how the light horse is being used to scout. And look around. We'll see how long it's going to take. That citizen cavalry might actually want to move over here because it's so far out, maybe late to the battle. So Rome could definitely crush the Pergamines with just weight of numbers here if they uh, just kind of take their time, form up, and surround the Pergamines. Um, and that's, I, I believe, what the Roman player should want to do. So for instance, take these Hastati, hit this flank, take the Saki Hastati, hit the other flank, bring the Vigiles up the middle uh, just to keep the Romans fixed haul the levies in to, to tear through any cavalry uh, that comes to charging like the Pergamine nobles, um, or send, you know, one out with each flank and then a couple in the middle. Um, but yeah, the Romans going to have to get their army into position. They've got some levies that have not yet moved, and I'm seeing some attacking Testudo. Yep, come into play here to help protect the Sucky Hastati. Uh, that makes sense to run in that Testudo, at least up until the point where you enter combat. It is going to certainly reduce the amount of... Uh, skirmish damage taken. I, the downside is it's going to make you much less maneuverable um, and easier to be charged. Pergamines are falling back. Their citizen cavalry did activate. It's now swinging around. The Romans have this high ground over here, but they don't really have a way to force the Pergamines to them. So let's fast forward again, because it looks like there's going to be some maneuvering here, and let's see how this plays out. So the Pergamine player is going to fall back to a more defensive position, swing their citizen cavalry around in behind. And let's just see how the Roman moves up. Some of their troops are a little far out ahead of the enemy, or of their main line advance, but the noble cavalry was not activated in an attempt to destroy them. Um, if they got fixed by infantry, those, those medium and light infantry get torn apart by a heavy shot cavalry. Pergamines also have these uh, Celtic light horse back here with the citizen cavalry, so they're moving together. Potential good grab for them would either be rear charges or those levies, either one. It does look like the Pergamines have maybe some interest in engaging this flank for the Romans here, which are still in a testudo to try and protect from that slinger fire. Yeah, and it looks like they'll use hoplites to kind of fix their right flank, use their Galatian swords to assault their uh, the enemy on their left flank. The Romans are going to fall back from that and bring forward reinforcements. It is unfortunate for them. They're going to take a lot of javelins in the back as a result there. They're going to take some slinger fire in the back too. These militia hoplites are now fixing the Saki Hastati. Um, the Pergamine lancers, though, are not headed in that direction. Instead, it looks like looks like the Romans are going to fall all the way back behind their Vigiles. Interesting. So they're going to let the Vigiles fix there. 
That noble cavalry has a chance to hit the Legatus here if it turns around, but it did not get turned around, so the player was busy elsewhere and then a charge into the slingers, but here comes the noble cavalry, but that is a good grab for the Romans. However, if the commander dies, a lot of these troops are not um, disciplined. The Hastadi are... Uh, it looks like the Saki Hastadi. I said a lot of them are not. The Vigiles... Well, never mind. The Roman troops. They're pretty much all disciplined. <laughs> Air doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm surprised the levies aren't disciplined. A little bit of a slow move here on the Saki Hastadi. They need to get around these uh, militia hoplites and outflank them. The levies are... Uh, aiding, but the levies are really needed against that cavalry. Meanwhile, the Pergamene cavalry got some rear charges in here while the Galatian swords are attacking the Hastati from the front. Galatian swords have much better damage um, than the Hastati. Um, their attack is a little less, but also solid charge on the uh, the Galatian swords where the Hastati are not going to have much of a charge. Let's see what the noble cavalry does. I think it used its... Uh, it's got an Intimidate ability on right now, which I believe is going to add Scare. So it should be able to route off these levies with relative ease. One of the Militia Hoplites is broken. Slinger, though, has good position. Let's kind of see how this one plays out. So Rome has lost its um, Hastati over here to the Cavalry Charges. And I mentioned that earlier, that those units were going to be vulnerable to that Cavalry. And they certainly were. So I would say um, Rome is in some pretty significant trouble here. There's now enough infantry left um, for the Pergamines to continue to fix and charge the Roman infantry, kind of doing an Alexander-style cleanup. However, that noble cavalry gets left in combat way too long here, and the Soki Hastati um, and its slingers and uh, the levies, I mean, it's just going to get cut down. So that Pergamine noble cavalry down to only 14 out of 40. Um, but, like I said, the Pergamines still have a pretty good contingent over here with some nice hammer and anvil strikes. Uh, the Roman army, a lot of them are fleeing here, those levies, and yeah, the noble cavalry is toast. It's knocked out, so we're going to see a final confrontation here between uh, some of this remaining Roman infantry, which again is heading into a testudo to avoid some of the skirmish fire, but it's not... I mean, it'll protect them from the skirmish, it's going to make them slow, it's going to make it difficult to fend off uh, cavalry charges. I would assume, because it's going to pack them in and let them get hit pretty hard. I think the Pergamines have a pretty pretty solid advantage here because I just don't see how the Romans, I mean unless those levies have enough ammunition, I don't see how they fend off that cavalry very well. So here comes the charges. The Hastati are definitely sturdier units than the Galatian swords, uh, to a degree. Um, they're not like amazingly sturdier, but they can be in a, in a prolonged fight. The Galatian swords really depend on a charge. Look at that nice rear shot there into the Sucky Hastati. Uh, however, that light horse with its frenzied charge was effective on the charge. It's now kind of trapped. It'll have to retreat through its own men. And then the citizen cavalry, which is normally not a powerful unit, but it will be strong enough on these uh, smaller unit settings. So we should see a pretty good cleanup here by the Pergamines. And so despite having been outnumbered pretty significantly, they are going to defeat the, the cheaper Roman army here. Now, I would actually think that Rome is actually probably pretty effective on lower funds, and I say that because Primarian troops are pretty cost-effective, so I think with the right build, Rome would honestly probably be very good at these lower funds. Um, I could be wrong there, but uh, I, I would tend to think they were. I mean, just look how many units they brought to the battlefield here. I think that really the only main problem here from the Roman was that uh, they separated their army apart some, and it allowed the Pergam uh, Pergamine player to to get in there. So that was Sirius Black II, and then we had Panzer Grenadier. So thank you to both, and interesting to send this in. I know it's different. Um, I want to say this was the player, and maybe said he wasn't, and I don't mean this as an insult if I get it wrong, but I, I think this was one of the players that said, hey, I'm not like a big-time um, competitive player, but we wanted to see what these settings are like. And this is the fun stuff. Like, you go play the game, you find a friend to play with, and you can do stuff like this. You can see how the different money settings or unit sizes impact things. And it does change things. And I would say, again, in, this, in these lower funds, I, I think skirmishers can become a lot more powerful in lower funds. Light and medium cavalry become a lot more powerful at lower funds um, because the, the killing power that you normally see at the higher funds level changes. Um, and I, again, I would think Rome would be potentially pretty solid here. I about half wonder if they just drop the Vigiles and, uh, you know, a couple of the levies and just bring some equites there. And with equites in play, I, I believe Rome gets pretty tough to take down because their infantry are 
fairly resistant to missile fire. They're okay in a melee. They can fix a line, and then you have enough cavalry to help support it. Rome's not going to have a lot of skirmish options at these price points for sure. Uh, whereas cheap slingers and cheap archers, I think, are going to be pretty powerful, which means the Greek factions could potentially fare well here, right? Fixing people with militia hoplites or other cheap hoplites while using skirmishers and cavalry, it may make those factions have significantly more power as well. So it is an interesting idea to play that. If you all have played it, leave some comments. Tell me what you think about the lower funds and how you think it impacts things. Air of Carthage signing out for now. Hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon with some more uh, battles in Total War Rome 2.